Hello, in this video tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to set up SOLIDWORKS uh, to name the files on creation based on the shared counter. This setup will not require developing of add-in and it could be done uh, only with VBA macro. Let's start by downloading the macro which is going to set the title based on the public counter. You can go to the CodeStack website, go to SOLIDWORKS tools, browse to model section and select the set title as part number macro. You can just copy the source code, come back to SOLIDWORKS, just create new macro. You should give it some name like set title and simply paste the source code in here. This macro will read the next counter value from the file. So we're just going to create a new text file here. Let's call it prt.txt and just give it the default counter, which is zero. So whenever a new counter is incremented, this file is going to be updated. So let's just check it and create new part file. Let's now uh, slightly modify our macro and just specify the correct path to our counter text file. Let's now start the macro. So you can see the title is set to PRT001. Let's create new part file and run macro again. So now the title set to PRT002 and as I would expect in my PRT.txt file I have a 2 as a last counter. Let's continue and as the next step I'm going to add that macro file as an attachment to my part file. So let's create a new part and select design binder, click add attachment and I just need to browse to the set title macro. I do not want to set it a link so it's going to be embedded into the file directly. Of course I can just run it directly from my file over here. So now as the next step I'm going to save it as a template. So I'll be able to later reuse it when I'm creating the new documents. So give it some name, let's call it inventory part. Now I'm going to repeat similar steps but set up the counter for assemblies. So let me edit my macro. So I should not be worried to edit the source code over here because I have already embedded it in part file. So just change the file path to be assembly.txt and just give it a slightly different base name. So let me just create a, a new counter file over here called ism.txt. Let's just reset this counter to zero and let's reset the part counter to zero as well. So let me create new assembly. I will embed uh, this macro to assembly as well. So I'm going to go to design binder, add attachment, browse, and again leave the link option checked off. So in a similar way I can just click run just to test and you can see my uh, title set to ASM001. In a similar way I'm going to save that uh, file as an assembly template and let's call it inventory assembly. Now let's test what we have so far. So let's create new inventory part and let's click and uh, design binder and set title macro. So as you can see it is set to the first uh, number. Now let's create an inventory assembly and I believe our counter already set to one. So when I click it next time that should give me ASM002. Yes, if I click one more time it's going to be ASM003 and so on. Because we have embedded those files directly, they both uh, refer to a different counters files. So if I come back to my part and click run macro, you can see that the part counter is used instead of the assembly counter, which is correct. So this process is manual now. So let's go ahead and automate it. So I will come back to a CodeStack website, go to more goodies, go to model, and just find the macro which is called run macro on document load. And let me just follow the instructions and create new macro. So this is the one which is going to be uh, run every time the model is opened and it's going to execute some code. Let's create new macro and give it some name, uh, for example, a uh, load macro runner. So I click save and according to instructions, I need to paste that code into the main module. So where my macro starts. I need to create another class module, so it's slightly different from the uh, just simple module. So if you can see, I can go to uh, VBA editor, click insert class module, and I should give it a name called file load watcher. 
and I should just copy the code over here and paste it into that module. And the last step is to create a handler module. This is the one which is going to be called when any of the models loaded and I supposed to add the custom code, custom VBA macro which I want to run every time my document is open. So important to give it exactly the same name as mentioned in the instructions. And as you would expect to make it work automatically, I just need to run attached macro from this uh, procedure. So I'm just going to create a variable of SOLIDWORKS and connect to SOLIDWORKS and just going to call run attached macro where I need to specify the parameters file name, module name and procedure name. So name of the file would be the name of my attachment which is set title as WP. So I'm just going to type it into my handle module. So set title dot SWP. My module name could be copied from this box. So it's going to be set title one. You might have a different name when you create your macro. And the procedure name is main. Usually this is a default name for the entry point of any macro. So I'm just going to paste it as main. Just the final step. I need to make sure that this macro only runs for the newly created files. So I don't want to run it for any existing files. So for that, I can just check the path name, which is the file location of the file. So if it equals to the empty string, that means that the file is new. And only when this condition met, I'm going to run the attached macro. Let's give it a try. I can simply run the macro and it's going to run in the background and monitor solar's events. So let's create new inventory part. And as you can see, my title is set correctly. Let's create inventory assembly. And same, my title is updated. So if I create another part, obviously you can see that my counter is incremented and title is set correctly. Now you might be thinking is what is going to happen if I close SOLIDWORKS and just uh, create new part file. So let me just close uh, my macro, close SOLIDWORKS. I will start it again and try to create new part or new assembly and we'll see what's going to happen. So SOLIDWORKS is starting. So I'm just going to create new inventory part and nothing is set because this macro wasn't run. So really what I want to do is whenever I start SOLIDWORKS to run this macro automatically and fortunately it is possible. We can use forward slash m switch to run the macro when we're running SOLIDWORKS automatically. So for that we're going to modify our shortcut. We cannot use the default shortcut of SOLIDWORKS because it is locked and we cannot set the command line parameters. So instead we're going to create a copy of the shortcut. Let's just navigate to SOLIDWORKS installation folder. Look for sldworks.exe file. You can just pin it into the taskbar like this. Let's open the properties page of this shortcut and modify the target field to uh, run the macro. So I just go to the uh, end of this uh, value, put forward slash M and full pass to the macro we want to run automatically with that shortcut. So when we finish, you can simply replace the shortcut uh, of your SOLIDWORKS. So just use this instead of the default one. Click apply, OK. And now let's start SOLIDWORKS. Now let's create new inventory part and see if my title is updated. So I create new file, select inventory part template, and my title is correctly set based on the next counter value. If I create a just standard assembly, so it's not inventory assembly, title is just default value. But if I create inventory assembly, my title is set based on the next counter. That completes the tutorial. So as you can see, you can uh, use macros to create some automation based on the solar events. And of course you can set more configuration here. Just check the CodeStack website for more macro examples and code snippets. Thank you for your time.